Hello, I am Al Ergen from AG, and this is BBP News. And we are going to tell you about Tanzania, the Geography Hour. I'm going to explain to you more about Tanzania as the manager of BBP News has asked me to do a special report. Okay, so first of all, let's start off with Tanzania's urban environment. It's quite similar to other countries, you know, like Brazil, and you know, it has a rural, well, it has a rural environment and an urban environment, and agriculture and farming mainly in the rural environment, and cities, and lots of jobs in the urban environment, and obviously people who want to migrate to these urban environments, like the major cities, like Dar es Salaam, or Zanzibar, or Arusha, or Nubeya. But again, those of people who are wanting jobs, push and pull factors like lack of education and lack of clean water. As there are many shanty towns near these major cities, um, citizens illegally getting water, electricity, and due to counter urbanization, many of you don't know about this. I'll just quickly tell you. It's when people migrate to these major cities, but because they become so overcrowded, people will migrate to unused land and rural places like Recife in Brazil or like so they become the new urban places and um, people can f like find more people can find jobs there rather than migrating already to the overpopulated places now now because its capital is the Doma it's not actually the biggest because again to counter urbanization and again like Brasilia and Brazil um, people are starting to migrate to the Doma and because there's unused land in the Doma and other cities like Mubeya and Dar es Salaam um, there are lots of uh, migration over there. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the economy of Tanzania. Tanzania is one of the world's poorest economies in terms of per capita income However, Tanzania averaged 7% GDP growth per year between 2000 and 2008 on strong gold production and also tourism. The economy depends heavily on agriculture, which accounts for more than one quarter of GDP, provides 85% of exports and employs about 80% of the workforce. The World Bank, the IMF and bilateral donors have provided funds to rehabilitate Tanzania's aging economic infrastructure, including rail and port infrastructure that are important trade links for inland countries. Recent banking reforms have helped increase private sector growth and investment, and the government has increased spending on agriculture to 7% of its budget. Continued donor assistance and solid macroeconomic policies supported a positive growth rate, despite the world recession. In 2008, Tanzania received the world's largest Millennium Challenge Compact grant, worth $698 million. Dar es Salaam used fiscal stimulus and loosened monetary policy to ease the impact of the global recession. GDP growth in 2009-11 to was respectable 6% per year due to high gold prices and increased production. As I was referring to Tanzania's capitalist country, government and presidency controls the worst like other countries, for example Africa and Brazil, there are often lots of riots and quarrels, who, sh who should get what, fair, poor, migration, favelas, shanty towns, and it's all very confusing, um, but Tanzania is more run by government and they, did, and, they did, and they do know what they are doing. Hi guys, I'm back and I'm with Alex Reeves and he's going to tell you a bit about the physical geography of Tanzania. Over to you, Alex Reeves. Thanks, Leo. You're welcome. Tanzania is an approximate latitude and longitude of 6 degrees south and 35 degrees east. It is in the continent of Africa and to the southwest of the continent. The capital of Tanzania is Dodoma. It has many lakes and rivers as well as a few mountains. The mountain range is called the Rivejo Mountains. It also has a, the legendary Kilimanjaro Mountain. It has a huge lake that's called Lake Victoria and a small lake called the Tag Anahika. Here is a great map. Thanks for that, Alex. Thanks.
Hi guys, I'm back with Alex Rubes and we're going to talk to you about the military history of Tanzania. So, there was a war between Uganda and Tanzania, often referred to as the Liberation War, in 1978 to 1979, which led to the overthrow of Idi Amin's regime. Idi Amin's forces included thousands of troops sent by Muammar Gaddafi and some Palestinian support. It was a big, big war and many people died. So we're going to tell you about the events leading to the war. Relations between Tanzania and Uganda had been strained for several years before the war started. After Amin seized power in a military coup in 1971, the Tanzanian leader Julius Nyerere offered sanctuary to Uganda's ousted president, Milton Obote. Obote was joined by 20,000 refugees fleeing Amin's attempts to wipe out opposition. A year later, a group of exiles based in Tanzania attempted unsuccessfully to ingrade Uganda and remove Amin. Amin blamed Nareri for backing and aiming his enemies. The relationships between Uganda and Tanzania remained strained for many years. In early October 1978, dissident troops ambushed Amin at the presidential lodge in Kampala, but he escaped with his family in a helicopter. This was during a period when the number of Amin's close associates had shrunk significantly and he faced increasing dissent from within Uganda. When General Mustafa Drizzi, Amin's vice president, was injured in a suspicious car accident, troops loyal to Adrisi and other soldiers who were disgruntled for other reasons mutinied. Amin sent troops against the mutineers, which included members of the elite Simbala Battalion. Bal 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 Battalion. Battalion. Some of whom had fled across the Tanzania border. The, rebe the rebellion spilled over into Tanzania, where Tanzania based anti Amin exiles joined the fighting against Amin's troops. Uganda declared a state of war against Tanzania and sent troops to invade the annex part of the Kagera region of Tanzania, which Amin claimed belonged to Uganda.